I held the small plastic case close to my eye and peered through the magnifying glass at a rare work of art. A 1921 high-relief peace dollar, MS-67, and worth more than my motorcycle. The coin wasn't mine, but Zack's dad, Jonah Kamaka. Zack became my fiancé six months ago. Zack has been terrified of telling his parents, specifically his dad. Zack seldom spoke of his dad, and rarely brought me here. Me and Zack get married in four months. Jonah was rich. We were in his villa just outside of Honolulu, sitting on the covered veranda with a spectacular view of the surf and sunset. We sat in pale wicker chairs with green cushions around a glass table under hanging lights made from conch shells. Their light was a delicate amber and it made the veranda seem cozy and intimate. Jonah collected rare coins like I had collected sand dollars as a kid, though I always placed the little creatures back into the ocean. Setting the rare coin in the magnifier down, I said, It's nice, Mr. Kamaka. He's formal like that, and grumpy, and often angry. Good thing his son isn't. I know it's nice, because I know what it cost, Mr. Kamaka said his face grimacing into a scowl. Oliver, speak your business. I'm beginning to see why Zack was terrified. Maybe coming over here was a bad idea. A slim, middle-aged woman with long black hair, pink shorts, and a loose-fitting white top carried a tray with four glasses on it, filled with something orange. Zack's mother, Makana. She had a large tropical pink flower in her hair, and she gave me a warm smile. Oliver, it's been far too long. You'll have to forgive Jonah. He's always a little sour if one of his stocks goes south. A little, Mr. Kamaka grumbled. Makana ignored him and said, Zachary said he'll be a minute. He wanted to go to his old room and find something. I don't know why we keep his old bedroom. Zachary never stays over except for Christmas. Actually, he didn't do it then. My fault. We went on a trip, I said. I knew why Zachary went to his old room, and he'd say something when the time was right. I've always thought that old room would be a great space to display my coins, Mr. Kamaka said. Makana clucked her tongue. Not this time, old man. You always complain that I have too many clothes, so I need Zachary's old room as a closet. Get rid of the clothes. You haven't worn most in more than a year, Jonah growled. A woman needs her choices. Maybe the old room would be better suited for my shoe collection. What do you think, Oliver? Makana said. It's always nice to have a television room, I said. We already have two of those, Zack said, exiting the house and taking a seat by me. Mom and Dad have two of everything. But only one wife, Mr. Kamaka said. Makana playfully slapped the man on the arm and momentarily became stern. If you even think about a second wife, I'm burning your dinner for the next year and you won't believe what I'll do to your eggs. And you would too, Mr. Kamaka said, slightly frowning. Now Oliver, Zachary, I have the feeling there is something you want to discuss. If it's money, don't even ask. I never do business with family. Good thing we're not talking about money, Dad, Zachary said, and smiled at me. I took a nervous sip of the orange drink. Pineapple, mango, orange juice, and rum. I have found someone I would like to marry, I started to say, but Makana interrupted. Do you see fireworks when you are with them? Do choirs sing? Does passion fill your blood and make you dream of them, even in the day? Makana asked. That is how I knew Makana was the woman for me, Mr. Kamaka said. We had a beach service with tiki torches lining the path, and during the ceremony, the drums were silent. But afterwards, I can still hear them. Do you remember our wedding cake? Pineapple upside down cake is not traditional, and your mother was so offended, she swore at us. She wanted a church wedding even bought the fancy shoes, and she had to take them off to walk on the sand. 
I didn't know she knew such language, Makana said, taking a seat on Mr. Kamaka's lap. Do you remember the flower petals and the lays, pure white, and their perfume filled the air? It was like we were in a garden, Mr. Kamaka said. Makana gave an impish smile. I think she had guessed what I was about to say. Oliver, I hope you have found someone that makes you happy. Who is it? Mr. Kamaka said. I don't think he figured it out. I took Zachary's hand in mine, brought it to my lips, and gently kissed it. You already know him. I declare my intention to marry your son, and would like to ask your blessing. Jonah's eyes narrowed until they almost closed, and his mouth turned down. Zachary, you're in love with Oliver? Dad, we love each other, and have for a long time. I thought you knew we had moved in together, Zach said. You moved in together? When? Mr. Kamaka yelled. Six months back, I said. Mr. Kamaka snorted, his brows furrowed, and he ignored me. Zachary, you love Oliver? He makes very little money. How is that supposed to impress me? I know he's not rich, but neither were you and Mom when you two married. What did you always tell me? You had a scooter between the two of you, and an apartment that always let the rain in, and a frying pan that was more rust than iron. But you were happy, Zachary said. You want to marry a poor kid who's little more than a beach bum, Mr. Kamaka said. I love him, Zach said. Oliver, I think it is very sweet and very considerate of you to ask us, Makana said. Give them your blessing, dearest. But it's Oliver. I remember him as little more than a street kid on the beach. I don't know how he and my son became friends, but there they were, two kids running and screaming and scaring the girls. The neighbors always complained of the noise, and I could never get any work done, Mr. Kamaka said. I liked the sound of the children playing. What happened to those days, Makana said. We grew up and fell in love. Mr. Kamaka, will you give us your blessing? I asked. Jonah Kamaka glared at Zachary and at me. No. Jonah, it's your son. Do you mean to drive him away? Don't you love him and want him to be happy? Makana said. I won't give my blessing. Oliver is poor, his family is poor, and he will never fit in with society. He's a gold digger who wants my money and name. This isn't about love. Zachary, you're being a fool. I will protect what I've earned, and Oliver will see none of it. If you marry him, you'll see none of it too, Jonah yelled. Zach's jaw clenched, his eyes filled with fury. He stood up. We don't care about your money, and we don't want to hang out with your snob friends, and Oliver makes more money than you think he does. So do I. Another thing, you have insulted the man I love and his family. I won't forget or forgive. Soon they'll be my family, and they are a lot nicer than you ever were. Apologize, or you won't see us again. The spot between my shoulder blades began to itch, as if somebody was sticking pins in me. This wasn't going anything like I had planned. Jonah, I'm ashamed of you. Oliver is a hard worker, and so is his family. He's always been respectful and never asked for anything. How can we stand in the way of their love? Makana said. Zachary, you will have nothing to do with Oliver, and that is my final say, Mr. Kamaka said. Dad, this is important to us. Zack said. It would mean a lot to us to have your approval, I said. Makana flashed a quick smile and laid a calming hand on Mr. Kamaka's arm. Let's change the subject and give tempers a chance to cool. Zachary, what were you looking for back in your room? Zack looked at me. I at him. He held out an old picture frame covered in layers and layers of seashells. We had made that years ago, and for the longest time, Zack kept my picture in it. It had a new picture now, one professionally taken of both Zack and me, sitting together and entwining our left hands in such a way that our wedding ring showed. 
This was the test picture the photographer took, and we wanted you to have it. Smaller versions will go into our invitations, I said. No, I forbid this marriage. Oliver, you are nothing more than trash on the beach. No name, no money, no future. Your family are lower-class beggars, and you will not drag my name down to your level. You are a blood-sucking parasite. Get out of my house, Mr. Kamaka said. There was silence for five heartbeats. Dad, you will apologize to my fiance, Zack said, his tone brimming with anger. Jonah, how could you be so rude? Oliver, I apologize for my husband, McCona said. I gave my love a sad smile and tried another tactic. Zachary, you told me your dad knew the best wines made in Hawaii. Would he be willing to help us? No, Mr. Kamaka shouted. Makana jumped to her feet, glaring at her husband. Jonah, your son and his fiancé came to us for help, and you turned them down. You're nothing but a, a bloated puffer fish. This bloated puffer fish says no, Mr. Kamaka shouted. The silence was heartbreaking. Oliver, I told you my dad was like this, and it's why I moved out so fast. He will never say he's sorry. We're giving the picture to your parents. Coming? Zack said, rising. He speed-walked into the house. Mr. Kamaka took to his feet and yelled, Zachary, if you disobey me and marry this, this leech, I will disinherit you. My idea for a little family camaraderie had turned into Armageddon. Zack was furious. Jonah glared at me. Thanks for the drink, Makana, but we should be going. I said, running to catch up to my fiancé. Makana rushed after us, shouting, Zachary, Oliver, let's talk about this. Jonah, you've insulted our guests. You're sleeping on the couch tonight. Do you know what the neighbors will say? Do you know what the gossip will be? I'm not burning your dinner. I'm not making it. Mom, it's no use talking to that man. Dad never changes, Zach yelled over his shoulder. We exited the manor. I took Zack's cold hand as we walked out the front door to my motorcycle. Just a minute, maybe I can help with the wine. Tell me what you were looking for, Makana said, running after us. I climbed onto the motorcycle, and Zachary took the seat behind me. Zachary took one helmet, I took the other. As Zack fastened his helmet, he said, We wanted something sparkling and made in Hawaii. There's a pineapple blanc that looks delicious. But don't bother. Oliver, Zachary, wait, Makana said. Don't worry, Mom. We don't blame you. Why did I think Dad would ever change? He's the same control freak I grew up with. You tell Dad we're having nothing to do with him, Zach said. Makana yelled so Mr. Kamaka could hear her. Jonah, you get out here and you apologize before our son leaves and never comes back. Dad never paid attention to me. His money and his stocks were more important than me. We're never bringing your grandson over here. Take off, Oliver. I told you we should never have come here, Zack said. I started the cycle. Grandson, Makana said. I snorted and pulled the folded ultrasound out of my wallet and showed her. Another thing we wanted to tell you tonight. My sister is pregnant and wants to give her baby up for adoption. As soon as the paperwork goes through, we will be the fathers. Jonah, Makana screamed and marched back inside. I wouldn't want to be on the other end of that hurricane. I drove the long way to my parents' house, hoping to calm down. I'd never seen Zack so tense. Everybody was there. My mom, stepdad, grandma, little brother, and my pregnant sister. We told them what had happened, and mom said, Zack... You're always part of our family. A week later, all my family helped us move from our one-bedroom apartment to a two-bedroom. One bedroom for us, the other bedroom for the nursery. This makes it official, I whispered when we were alone. We held the wedding at a small reception hall in one of the hotels. The color scheme was blue and white because we already knew our baby was a boy. It was a small wedding, 30 guests for me, and 30 for Zack, because we couldn't afford a big party, and we didn't want one. 
I made sure my sister had the chair of honor. Our wedding was a combination baby shower and wedding, and because my sister couldn't drink, we kept the wedding dry. Makana came. She presented us with the crib, and our guests gave us more baby stuff than our apartment could handle. Jonah Kamaka never showed. Zack never said anything, but his father's absence hurt. It was only after the wedding we learned that Makana had moved into a place of her own, leaving Jonah alone. Our honeymoon was at a resort on Maui, and it was two weeks of paradise. We wanted a little time for ourselves before the baby came. Our apartment looked like a hurricane dropped a cruise ship inside. We had to pare down our possessions to survive. Our mantra became, what did the baby need? We gave away most everything else. Two months, more or less, later, our apartment was ready and the baby was born. My sister named him Jasper, our little Jazz. We posted pictures of our newborn online, including his christening and recordings of his first words, his first steps, his first time at the beach. It became our baby's photo album. When Jazz was six months old, we had a family picnic on the beach, and Jazz took after me. He found a sand dollar and played with it before throwing it in the ocean. It didn't quite make the ocean, so Zack helped it. We made another collection of seashells, and later that night, we made another seashell picture frame, but this time we put a picture of our little family in it. One night, Zack sat on our little balcony, staring at the parking lot below. He didn't have to speak, but the pain of his father rejecting us played across his face. I placed little Jazz in his arms, and Zack's mood improved. The next day, I did something I might regret. I packed a little jazz up, we had a car now, and took him to a place I never expected. I went to see Jonah Kamaka. I held our son as I rang the doorbell. Thirty seconds later, a butler arrived. My name is Oliver, husband is Zach. I brought our son, Jazz, and I'd like to introduce him to his grandfather, I said. The butler made a slight bow and left me standing just outside the front door. Two minutes later, he returned and ushered me into the foyer. He didn't offer me a seat. Jonah Kamaka appeared, though more accurately, his scowl appeared before he did. He said, People like you are always asking for money. The answer is no. Get out. Have I ever asked you for any I said. I know your type, he growled. I got a little angry. I know your type as well. I'll have you know I signed a prenup with Zack before you disinherited him, and I paid my own way through college. I've always paid my own way. How dare you think I want your money? You insult me. It's tainted with your selfishness and arrogance. Mr. Kamaka's face reddened, but he kept his anger in check. Then why did you come? I gave him a bitter smile and held my baby up. This is your last chance before we cut you out of our lives. Jazz needs a grandfather. Zack needs a father. Makana needs a husband who cares. I would have liked a father-in-law I could look up to. Instead, I find an angry old man who only cares about his money, his name, his status. Is there any chance of rescuing this family? Your pride tells me no. You are so stuck on yourself that you can't see the damage you've done to Zack and Makana and me. To your grandson. I was hoping you'd be a better man, but you're not. Jonah, I hope you're satisfied with your money because no one else can stand you. You don't talk to me like that, Jonah roared. I'll let myself out, I said dinner time. Once I put little Jazz to bed, I told Zack where I had gone and what I had done. And his response, your dad is my dad now. We were to have another beach picnic on Jazz's first birthday with all the family and extended family. But a nearby hurricane made the weather cold and windy. We held the party in our apartment. 
Once again, we had a million pictures, and we streamed the event because some relatives didn't want to brave the storm. Makana was there, and she brought a gift. Several bottles of a pineapple blanc made on Kauai, the wine we'd wanted at our wedding but had to forego. We were singing Happy Birthday and watching Jazz squish frosting through his fingers when the doorbell rang. Everybody was already here, or streamed with us. One of the neighbors must be complaining because of the noise, Zack said. My brother opened the door. The entire party came to a standstill, and my stomach felt like it had a brick in it. Jonah Kamaka stood in the storm, carrying a blue and white present. He stared at all the people in our apartment. Everybody knew what he said about me and my family more than a year ago. Nobody made a sound. Except my stepdad. My stepdad folded his arms, fury behind his eyes, and my mom placed a hand on his shoulder to keep him calm. My stepdad blurted out, Come to join the lower class. We stared at the stranger in the door. Dad, what are you doing here? Zack said, his voice dripping cold. Mr. Kamaka cleared his throat. Is it too late to give my blessing? The End Thank you for sharing the story with me. I appreciate it. I'm Gio, and we'll see you next time. Peace.